Archaeology has had a good year. We've seen how new technologies like AI can lead to big discoveries and scientists have shed new light on things that were found in the past. But it was also a year of new archaeological discoveries. For example, mummification workshops from Egypt were found that reveal some of the secrets of this ancient way of burying people. A submerged temple in Italy was built 2,000 years ago by traders from the Arabian deserts. And laser technology helped reveal a huge Maya city that had been lost to the jungle. These are the seven most interesting new things we found. On number seven, we have the Dead Sea Swords. Archaeologists found four remarkably well-preserved swords in a cave in the Judean Desert in June. The swords were left there between the first and third centuries, when the area was a safe haven for Jewish fighters against Roman rule. Wood and leather generally rot quickly, but the dry air here kept them safe, so the swords still have their hilts and scabbards. An iron point from a Roman spear, called a pilum and pieces of worked wood, were found in a cave southeast of Jerusalem and next to the Dead Sea. The four swords were then found hidden behind stalactites after metal detectors were used to search the cave. The guns were likely put away there by Jewish rebels during the Bar Kokhba revolt, which happened between 132 and 136 AD. They may have taken them from a fight or stolen them from Roman troops. Archaeologists are happy because the wood and leather have been kept in good shape. This could help them figure out when and where the swords were made. On number six, we will talk about a new giant stone head on Rapa Nui. Moli are huge stone heads that were found by volunteers in February on Rapa Nui, which is also known as Easter Island. Rapa Nui is in the Pacific Ocean, more than 2,000 miles off the coast of Chai. The statue isn't very tall for a mole, just over five feet but some of the 900 or so on the island are up to 33 feet tall. One moe that hadn't been fished would have been more than 70 feet tall when it was finished. But it was found in a crater lake that had dried up, and researchers think there may be more to find there. The moe were mostly built between 1250 and 1500. The people who live in the area see the figures as the living faces of their godly ancestors. Archaeologists will look for the tools that were used to make this new moe from soft volcanic rock. They don't know anything about it, not even which ancestor it represents. If only these wooden tablets with signs called Rongorongo could be read, they might tell us more. On number five, we have a lost Maya city discovered by LiDAR. Laser detection and ranging was used to find a previously unknown Maya city on Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula in June. This showed how powerful LiDAR can be. The method uses equipment in the air to scan the ground with thousands of pulses of laser light every second. This can reveal details that would normally be hidden by trees and other obstacles, like the historic bends and channels of the Mississippi River and the shelters that soldiers built during the Battle of the Bulge. When archaeologists went to the site on foot, they called it a Compton, which comes from a Yucatec Maya word for the city's many stone columns. For about 250 years, until the Maya society fell apart between 900 and 1000, they think it was a major center. It was then abandoned, possibly because of drought and fighting within the culture. The Ocompton site is more than 120 acres big and has plazas, ball courts, homes for the rich, raised platforms, religious altars and pyramid temples. The biggest pyramid's remains are more than 80 feet tall. On number four, we will talk about a submerged desert temple in Italy. In August, Italian researchers said they had found the underground remains of a temple that was made 2,000 years ago by Nabatians. The temple was found near Naples. The Nabatians were desert traders who brought European goods to the Romans. They came from what is now Jordan and Saudi Arabia. The Nabatians also built Petra. A few miles west of Naples, at the port of Puteoli, which is now called Pozzuoli, they did most of their business. The temple on the side of the port had been buried during volcanic activity in the area, which has a view of Mti Vesuvius. The underground ruins have an altar to the Nabetan gods. Archaeologists think the temple was both a place of prayer and a billboard for Nabetan society. Saiju and Abdulj offered two camels to the god Dashara, says a Latin writing on a piece of marble. 
This may have been a sacrifice to help trade talks or a gift for a dangerous sea trip. On number three, we have two mummy workshops from ancient Egypt. In May, Egyptian researchers said they had found two more buildings for mummification at the Saqqara necropolis, which is a few miles south of Cairo and close to the ruins of the old city of Memphis. The buildings were built between the 30th dynasty and the Ptolemaic period, which is late for ancient Egypt. Egyptians mummified their dead to keep them alive in the future, a process that goes back thousands of years to around 2600 BC. Archaeologists think that smaller stone beds in the other workshop were used to mummify animals. One of the new workshops at Saqqara has stone beds that were used to prepare human bodies. The researchers also found tools for mummification, clay jars for innards, and sacred vessels for embalmed organs. They also found stores of natron, which was a type of soda ash that was used in the embalming process and came from dry lake beds in the desert. On number two comes lost gemstones from a Roman bathhouse. Dozens of cut jewels of Roman animals and gods were found in Carlisle, in the north of England. They were found near the remains of an old drainage system that, in the third and fourth centuries, took water away from public pools. Archaeologists told the public about the finds in June. The gemstones are thought to have been worn as jewellery by rich bathers, but they fell into the drains when the humidity and heat of the baths made their sets free. Semi-precious stones like agate, jasper, amethyst and carnelian make up these gems. Some are cut with pictures of Roman gods like Apollo, Venus and Mars, while others have pictures of animals like rabbits and birds. Intablios, which are carved jewels like this one, were used as a form of signing by the Romans. They would press a ring into clay or wax to make a seal. The old pipes were discovered under a building owned by the Carlisle Cricket Club. In Roman times, the city, which was called Lumbuvelium, was a regional centre in Britain. On number one, we will discuss a fateful wartime shipwreck in the South China Sea. A Japanese cargo ship called the Montevideo Maru sank in 1942 with more than a thousand Allied prisoners of war on board. In April, Australian hunters said they had found the ship's wreck. It had Australian soldiers who had been caught during Japan's attack of New Guinea, as well as Norwegian sailors and more than 200 people who had been seized. Japan at the time controlled the island of Hainan in China, where the ship was going. The US submarine US Sturgeons saw it off the coast of the Philippines in the north. It took the Sturgeon several hours to find the Japanese ship and sink it with bombs because they didn't know it was carrying Allied prisoners of war. The sinking is the worst marine accident in Australia's history, and none of the prisoners made it out alive. But one Japanese crew member lived and said that prisoners who had made it to her made boats sang Old Lang Syne to their dead friends on the shipwrecked ship. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more captivating insights into the mysteries of our world.